Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I'm being a little bit of a fangirl today because I have somebody really cool on the show. <laughs> Welcome, Trav Bell, to the show. He is the author of my bucket list blueprint, and I am going to actually check something off of my bucket list right now because his name is on a meet a celebrity list on my bucket list. So I'm crossing that off in the moment right now that I get to interview. Oh, dear. So welcome to the show. See, I literally crossed that off the bucket list right there. So awesome. um, how are you? Awesome. Welcome to the show. Kristen, stoked to be on. Thanks for thanks a lot for having me. Hi, everyone. Yeah, uh, really happy to be on and uh, hopefully add some value here. Great. Well, you know what? Let's just talk about a bucket listing. How did you even get involved with this? I'm sure as a little kid, you probably didn't come up with, you know, doing a bucket list. No. So how did this come about? No, it's, yeah, I can't believe I really do this for a living. At the end of the day, um, I've been the bucket list guy for about 10 years. Um, someone actually called me the bucket list guy about 10 or just over 10 years ago. So, um, yeah, it's not, not something that you go through school. Um, maybe these days, yes, but back in my day, um, it wasn't certainly something on the career path <laughs> that I only, uh, right. that I could model off anyone that was doing this. But, um, you know, the fact that I get to you know, run around the world, inspire audiences, write books, um, speak from my heart, and hopefully help people live a regret-free life is uh, rather than a regretful life is uh, really the holy grail um, bonus that I get paid for it. So, but no, I, um, I I grew up here in Ocean Grove where I am now. Um, I'm on the coast, just about an hour and a half out of Melbourne here in Australia. And I grew up as a, as a jock, as you say, in America. Um, did a phys ed degree uh, in about third year uni university I started this thing called a uh, personal fitness training back in the early 90s and there was only a handful of personal trainers in a, you know really in australia at that point in time so i was kind of like one of the pioneers in personal training always loved helping people i mean at the end of the day i was helping people with their psychology back then and and their health more so and now it's a, a bit more of a you know personal development kind of uh, kind of journey and uh and maybe deeper psychological stuff that i help people with but at the end of the day, I, I started with one client, ended up with tens of thousands of clients. I was the first to franchise personal training studios in Australia, you know, over two million personal training sessions. Did that for 20 years. That was my whole identity. But I, you know, probably like a lot of people you come across, had a bit of a breakdown before breakthrough kind of moment. And life got on top of me, slipped into a state of depression, business, life, toxic people, blah, blah, blah. You get the story. And... Instead of going on heavy antidepressants, which is kind of like a band-aid effect, I uh, decided and had to su really sum up the courage to, uh, I really wanted to find out, get to the root cause of what I was going through. So I kind of learned about psychology, forced myself out the door, went to all, you know, read all the books, went to all the all the seminars and everything that you that you go through, work, walk on fire, go to Burning Man, did ayahuasca, just trying to find <laughs> myself. And, just trying um, to find out what was going to work, eh? Oh, my God. I still haven't worked it out really. <laughs> but um, at the end the of the day. is real every day, right? Oh, the, oh 100%. And, um, and then, you know, I did work through some stuff, admittedly, but I really didn't want to go. I just didn't want to put a Band-Aid over the top of it. I wanted to get to, you know, really the root cause of what I was going through. So I learned about positive psychology, NLP, became a, a you know, master certified life coach, um, law of attraction, Akagi principle, all of these things that we learn and uh, walked on fire, you know, did all that stuff. And uh, and then about a year and a half sort of into that journey, uh, a friend of mine said, Trev, why don't you teach this stuff? You know, you're here every weekend, you, you, you know, like you go into all these seminars and so why don't you teach this stuff? He actually said, why don't you teach this shit? But, but <laughs> why don't you teach this stuff? And I went, well, that helped me. It helped me compartmentalize what, you know, helped me reason with um, uh, what, you know, all the, the money I'd invested and the time I'd invested. But it was, I'd seen some really, you know, good speakers in that time, as we all have. And I, for me, I, I grew up somewhat shy and, um and, and for me, you know, speaking on stage was a like a big domino in my life that I felt I had to push over at the time that, that definitely had a big ripple effect into other areas of my life. So I went, all right, 
I want to put on talk. I want to, you know, grab everything that I know, all my entrepreneurial history as well. I've never really had a job, so I've always worked for myself. So I've learned some, uh, I've learned some things, and my real learning started kind of after university, to be honest. And I um, put on a talk. I was absolutely shitting myself. Mm. I went for about uh, two hours, and about halfway through that talk, I started sharing the fact that I had a list to do before I die since I was 18, actually written down. This is only 10 years ago. I'm 48 now. And and a lot of people didn't know this about me. And I, th I thought, I, I thought, you know, everyone did this, but I discovered I was the only freak in the room. <laughs> so what it's done for me since I was 18, even before it was a bucket list, it's always been my compass. It's always been my f the filter that I looked at life through, in my lens. And it, what... What I always recalibrated on, even in times of you know times of sadness, what I recalibrated on, and, and it helped me get out of bed in the morning, which it has now for a lot of other people. But at the end of the seminar, Joe, one of the participants, she said, um, "How is all this list to do before you die stuff? It's really inspired everyone, and it did. And it's like a bucket list. You're you're like the bucket list guy." Mm. And I went ping, light yeah. bulb moment. Went home and registered the bucketlistguy.com. <laughs> Over ten years ago, and I've been doing. I've been staying in that lane ever since, you know. And uh, it's been absolutely awesome. I got out of my personal training. I, I sold off some studios. Uh, told them to rebrand. I defranchised the whole thing and went online. and And I figured uh, I had all these bricks and mortar kind of businesses going on. And and I um, and then at that time, I read the Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, which absolutely ruined my life in a good way. And I would. <laughs> Damn you, Tim Ferriss! I yeah. would love to. Run sh I would run. Love to run my shit from a hammock in Thailand too. <laughs> so I, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like, because you know, I, I, I didn't feel free, and I, and freedom is one of my biggest, you know, my biggest values, and I, I wasn't feeling that, and I hadn't travelled that much, and I thought, what, what's going to, you know, how am I going to tie all this together? Did a values kind of stock take of well of myself and it just fitted in nicely and it just felt right. So I uh, went for it. Now I was on the Google machine, you'll love this. I was on uh, the internets and at the time and I went, oh, who's like the Mac Daddy? Who's like the king of bucket lists in the world? Oh, look, no one. So I called myself the world's number one bucket list expert. No one else was. There you go. Since no one else is in the market, mm -hmm. you get to claim that. That's your mic drop, huh? So you know what I love? I, I love so many things. I want to talk about the book and I want to talk about your journey into writing the book because obviously this this recently was published in the last, what, it was December of 2020. Is that Yes. Correct? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, COVID. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. COVID. So I actually got the book done. It's literally been like every talk I've done in 10, over 10 years. Talk about a battle of procrastination and perfectionism. Oh my God. I could write a book on that. And, and, but I just went, I'm not going to enter 2021 after having all the excuses knocked out. I'm too busy, you know, speaking around the world. I can't, you know, haven't got time to finish. Lover, I, I had time, and mm -hmm. I think we've all had time uh, to get these kind of big projects done. And so, apart from doing the book, I've also I also did my teeth, I did my will, we did, built a veggie patch, I cleaned the shed, all these stuff that have oh, been yeah, over. You're, you're set to go. <laughs> 2020 was your year. Huh? <laughs> That's so funny because well, that, um, yeah. I too had a um, the the first time. You know, we're we're both authors, right? And I understand the vulnerability and the procrastination. Oh. I had started and stopped writing my book many times um, because yeah. there wasn't. I don't know what. I think it was the vulnerability. I think it was, well, if I put this out there, um, then it's out there forever. And then I have to be accountable for that. And I have to deal with yeah. whatever happens with that. And so I, I totally get it. And finally, mm -hmm. what kicked me into gear was really just, it was, it was five years coming for me. I'd been doing some things and someone's like, you should write a book. That was 2015. Uh, I published in 2019. So it took me about yeah. four years to actually um, take that step and make it real. But it, it took really that accountability of someone well, saying, you got a great story and people are yeah. going to learn from it. It's going to change people's lives. I was like, I, I guess. <laughs> so Yeah. No, I, I knew it would make an impact. And I thank you again for having me on the show. But for me, it was it was also about segmenting off, you know, part of your part of your intellectual property, right? And going, mm -hmm. okay, that's the only bit that I'm going to put in the book. 
you know, and because of, you know, book number two, threes, fours and fives and sixes, they're already written in my head. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, what, you know, I had to go, all right, stop, just, you know, create, create one with this, you know, with, with this much knowledge in it and then park it, you know, park the rest for the next one and the next one, you know. So actually segmenting your your knowledge or what you're going to put in the book for me was the hardest because as, a th as thought leaders, you're constantly evolving your topic. You're constantly evolving that thought leadership of, you know, you're constantly going down your own rabbit hole, so to speak, of all these other new ideas and ways you could, you know, ways it, it helps people and, so actually stopping, compartmentalising a piece of your intellectual property, putting in a book, putting in a speech, putting in an event or putting it in a, you know, in a program is, uh, yeah, the entrepreneur's, um, <laughs> For sure. the entrepreneur's uh, nightmare kind of thing. So, so I know yeah. we've, all, we've heard, you know, I'm sure most, if not all people have heard of the bucket list and, you know, of course, the movie that had came out however, however long ago that was and that kind of, uh, normalized it or familiarized most people with an official bucket list. And I think a lot of people tend to think that a bucket list has to do a lot with travel. But what I love about what you put in here is all the different categories of all the different things besides, okay, travel is this tiny piece of what you want to do with your whole self and your whole yeah. person. So talk about that for a minute. Yeah, I created the My Bucket List Blueprint and uh, because we live in a world of in delayed gratification, right? So let me go back a step. The statistics around depression, you know, some of the stuff that I've been through, anxiety, the overprescription of antidepressants, you know, suicides, youth suicides. We've even got this thing now called the loneliness epidemic, which is the adverse effect of social media. And then you go through, through COVID and lockdowns and everything else going on in the world right now. It's an absolute perfect storm for mental health problems. You know, we, I don't think we've really seen it just yet, you know. And so these statistics, even before COVID, were climbing, right, and, and at, at astronomical rates. Um, so many people are living in a, in a in a world, maybe pre-programmed, unconscious, or even conscious. I, I don't know, but of delayed gratification. I'll be happy when syndrome, waiting for the perfect time or some day to come around. And we've all got examples around us where that time, I've sacrificed my happiness. I've you know just sucked it up and got on with it, and you know gone to a job that I hate every single day. And if you look at the amount of disengaged like statistics, especially in America, it's around 80% of people go to work every single day, not that much different here in Australia, but people who go to work every day and just, just get the paycheck, come home and are really not into what they're doing. That's what they call disengaged. There's so many people like that. And they're, they're waiting for, for some day to come around, maybe retirement, and unfortunately that retirement day or that time in the future gets cut short. You know, I want to help people. I want to help people be happier now. You know, and hence, tra so travel. You've got to have you've got to have a lot of resources to travel, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got to have a lot of time and money. And you know, going to Machu Picchu, going to Australia, going to wherever, you've got to have you know that you've got to find leverage. You've got to have that that cash flow and that time flow to enjoy. So you've got to set up that vehicle and sometimes people aren't in the right vehicle to optimise to, uh, that is optimised to give them that time flow and that cash flow. So people are, you know, the, the negative connotation around bucket list is the fact that people do think it's about travel and people, you know, think that a bucket list is something off in the future for one day, that perfect time. I want people to be happier now because it reverses some of these statistics. You know, basically what I teach Kristen, is, is positive psychology, with, just with this brand of bucket list over the top of it, right? It's about helping people uh, experience more meaning, more purpose and more fulfilment and more gratitude in their life, which is the pillars of positive psychology, more happiness, all right? But not happiness later on in life, happiness now. Hence right. why I wrote the My Bucket List Blueprint is to help people sort of go north, south, east, west in their own brain and, and help them to extract and articulate this personally meaningful and holistic list and there's going to be low-hanging fruit on it 
Mm -hmm. right? When it's all mapped out, you've done yours and there's going to be things on it that you can literally do right now. That's that like, happened to me this past weekend. I, I crossed something off the list. I had never in awesome. in northeast Michigan, or uh, well, I'm southeast Michigan. Um, we there's fireflies everywhere, and I grew up with fireflies, yeah. lightning bugs, whatever you call them. And I've never caught one because I hate bugs, right? So even though they're cool, I was like, I want to catch one, and not in a jar in my hand. So this past weekend, oh. uh, we were at a music festival, and we were, um, you know, we were a vendor booth at the music festival, and all of a sudden it started to get dark. And I saw this like this firefly right in front of me, and I was like, "I'm gonna get it! I'm gonna get it this time! I'm not scared! I'm gonna grab the bug!" Running, so I grabbed the bug. You're running around like a crazy person. It, it did. People were like, "What is she doing?" And I'm like trying to do this. Finally, I got it in my hand, and it lit up, and then I let it go, and I was like, "There you go." That and that moment of that just I felt like a little kid but that's the kind of happiness you're talking about you can yeah, get right now yeah. that you, and it's intentional exactly. that's what I love about your blueprint is that you have to be in number one it's written oh. number two it's intentional it's like now that you have that you're accountable to it and it's not just something lofty in your head or that someday it's it's on yeah. here and I can do something about it and, and intention is created by actually writing stuff down Okay, so so that's that's where the joy comes in. At very few times in our life do we have the opportunity, or people don't give themselves a break to take the time out of their life to work on their life. And I've created this blueprint in the book, so people can literally go in and and like scribble and hack into the book and abuse the book and you know doggy the thing and you know and and make as many notes as possible. That that's my wish. Is that it becomes a workbook for people to really. Uh, unearth it, all these deep and dark thoughts that they've got that they want to do and yeah uh, and it just just let go of judgment let go of what other people think of you let go of the ego this is all about you and about you finding happiness a more ha this might be you know for a lot of people it's been an absolute game changer it really has it, it you know I could tell you some uh, some really heartwarming stories um that that how it's helped people you know um and couple that with the ted talk as well and how that has helped people um but this might be also be the just the icing on the cake you know for other people so yeah i want people to be happier now um and i'm doing my bit to change hopefully the narrative and to give people real tools to be able to self-manage out of sad patches like i was in or sad patches you know for uh to live their life you know to wake them up stop living by default and live by intentional design like you said stop just existing and and start truly living you know one of the things that i think i'm quoted for the most is people christine people are dying at 40 and being buried at 80. yes we all know we know people we all know people that are just sleepwalking through their life and they might this be happy doing that it has such yeah, an that, impact yeah. this right here <laughs> is one of the things that i sat and i looked and it's a trip for those who have not read the book first of all go to the bucketlistguide.com and buy your copy of the bucket list blueprint or you can get it on amazon wherever but you've got to get your copy mine is marked up all over the place like you said dog ears i got put everything in here because i'm like oh my gosh that's on the list i have to cross it off um but but when i cross that off you only put uh, there's there's only 80 here right and i'm exactly 40. Yeah. so that is yeah. half half of my life mm. is over mm. you know, statistically speaking and that so was such an eye opener for me because I was like, well, there's just so many things on my list that I have to check off. So literally, I don't have that much time left. I need to get going on it. And it really, um, I'm an adventurous person in general. I'm usually, I'm, I'm yeah. pretty adventurous. I, I like to do crazy things, but I also like to do silly things, all kinds. And I love how that was really, it's motivation. It gives me something to do besides work because I do love my work. And I know you oh. love your work and love to help people, yeah. but also that's part of being your holistic self is being able to take care of you and have you be inspired so that you can inspire other people. And that's what I love most that's about this. That's what it's all about. You know, it's really and, inspiring yeah. me to keep being the best version of me. Oh, that's so good. It's so good that, yeah, you know, that's going to be an audiogram right there. That's <laughs> going to be, uh, <laughs> that's going to be a quotable quote. That, um, but yeah, I, I've said it, you know, for years, a bucket list is a tangible life plan. That's all about you. Where your career plan or your business plan should fit into your life plan and not be the other way around. 
you know, it really brings home that work to live principle, right? Yeah. Um, and if you've, and with your help, obviously with your community and, you know, if you've done business right, if you've done your job right, if you've done your career right and when optimised, it should produce the time flow and the cash flow to allow you to go and live your life. And a lot of people are in love with the actual byproducts of an optimised business or an optimised job, which is the time and the money. You ask most people, what are you going to do with the time and the money? You know, a lot of people don't even know yeah. what they're going to do. Oh, I'll do a bit of trouble when I'm older. You know, most people will say the top three things. One, one is pay off the house, put the kids through school, do a bit of trouble when I'm older. Yeah, and possibly sicker. Mm-hmm. My dad passed away of cancer uh, in 2017 at the age of 63. And, you know, he was always one of those, uh, when I retire, when I retire, when I retire type person. And um, just as he was, you know, coming yeah. to his last days, uh, he he really was super helpful at telling us, you know what? don't don't wait you aren't guaranteed retirement he you know he was always my whole life would, would teach me things like you know don't buy the boat it's a waste of money don't do this don't do that yeah. just you know live simply and just kind of be happy with what you got and things like that which were great principles mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not dissing him for that but by the end of his life when he got cancer and he waited so long to do the things that made him really fulfilled and happy and he never got a chance he looked at me in my eye and he said it, you're not guaranteed retirement. Do it now while you're young. And so he changed his tune and said, do it all now. If you want to buy the boat, buy the boat. If you want to do this, do that. Because you just never know. And that That's, was so free, freeing to me to hear him say that, but also sad that he waited so long to do so many things that he wanted to do because of the right time or when he retires or when he gets older. And you're not promised wow. health. And later on in life, I've got health now. What can I do today to? Um, you know, yeah, know? yeah. We, we, you know, like everyone, Kristen. Thank you for sharing it. Like everyone's got an example or a, a couple of handfuls of examples like that. Why wait until you get a use by date? Why wait for someone else, someone close to you? Um, you know, to go through trauma, go through this distress, and or them. You know, show the example of what a use by date looks like for you to reprioritize. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's like you, you've got to keep your stuff top top of mind. Your your business and your job is not everything. It's not everything. But what this does, right? And and you know, we haven't really spoken about it at length. But what this does, hopefully, is give everyone a real sense of hurry up. Yeah. Like a real fi like finite sense of hurry up to to get off the fence, make decisions. Hire new people if you're in business. Trust in other people. Fail forward faster. But but let's build this thing already. You know, I love what you just said. Fail forward. You know, my one of my mantras in in my just something I love to say and live my life by is I would rather have failure than regret. I would rather fall on my face and screw up and embarrass myself and just, you know, reap the consequences of that than to have regret, to say I, I didn't mm -hmm. die trying. And so that's that's kind of my motto. And this solidified it and actually just let me write it down in a freeing way. I mean, one of the silliest yeah. things I have on here, for me, it's silly at least, is <laughs> um, I've always wanted to like wear a wig and be like, feel like I'm a different person in public. Like even in my hometown where people would like, like be like, that kind of looks like her, but she doesn't have long black hair. I mean, I have this signature hair everybody recognizes. I'm like, I'm going to wear like a bright red <laughs> wig or something that's so like normal, not like crazy, you know, clown wig, but like something that when, feels normal. When are we, when are we, when are we going to do this? Are you, are you going to dress in drag? We can wake real wigs together. Yeah, I don't get up. I've done it before. <laughs> right, <laughs> sounds is, like a plan. Um, next time you're is, here or when I come to Australia, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. I'll wear a wig and I'll just be someone else for the day. <laughs> oh, look, hey, I've been a burning man, you know, enough right. to said. Uh, yeah, the, um, no, but, you know, like that's the, the fear of judgment is one of the things that hold us back, the fear of looking silly. You know, like when I when I talk to rooms of people, I say, okay, well, in my rooms, you know, out there we get judged. In here, let's just brag. Let's just go for it. Let's just die. Just don't care what anyone thinks. Let's really build that. I won't swear, but let's really build that that muscle that I don't give a muscle. Right. <laughs> um, and the quicker you build that I don't give up muscle, 
mm -hmm. uh, the better. Yeah, it's really true because you can't, um, you know, one of my products that I sell is kind of an embarrassing product that people talk about. And so it's like, how do you go around talking about using the bathroom as one of your products? And I'm just like, because you can't not care. You have to be like, this is a problem everybody has. And this is how it's solved with this product. So you can't be embarrassed about it. You just have to put it out there and you're not going to yeah. be for it. The, the moment you realize that that you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. You're not always going to please everybody and everybody's not always going to like what you do or agree with it. And they might yeah. judge you, but they don't have to sleep at your pillow at night. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> and you know what? If you, if you get a few, not haters, but people that disagree, it means that you're at the edge. So if you're not getting them right now, guys, go out and get more. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I, the, the the sense of fulfillment, even since I've like, you know, I've always I've had a bucket list for a while, but um, mm. your book motivated me to be serious about it and actually write it down because I had stuff like I knew was on my list places or things or people that, um, you know, I've had this elite eight list of people I wanted to meet and interview oh, wow. as part of a podcast. Things that have nothing to do with my business, but just awesome individuals in life and i have a list yeah, I'm of like that with mine. yeah i just i read a book and i'm, I'm exactly like it like, like i read a book recently and it, and it changed my life you know systemology here and i'm like i'm going to connect with this guy i'm yes. just going to stalk him until he says yes yes and, did. <laughs> and you did so <laughs> this is all possible it's just like you know i think the more you realize that the more you realize that um people are just we're, we're all human blood right we're all like the same people you know we just when just, i say when i say stalk i mean professionally stalk mm -hmm. let's just go with that yeah because yeah. that's what we all do right right these days <laughs> keeping around the corners like you know that's yeah, right like that yeah. For sure. yeah and i think it's just it really just uh brings it to life it brings it to life to say i actually wrote down a list of names of people that i want to meet and have a conversation with and that's now intentional it, it's on a piece of paper whether it means anything to anybody else or not um it's it's a, a fulfilling for me and uh, inspiring and enlightening to help me my, with my lifelong learning. I'm a learning yeah. addict. I like to learn so, so many new things. And so, so Kristen, that's part of just, it. Just, just to interrupt you there, sorry, it is, but, but and, and again, we haven't talked about this, proof, but now that you've written it down, how, because you, you, you've read this a while ago and, and you've written it down, how has your, um, how has your world changed in terms of like, are you noticing things that are that are aligned with what you've written down now? You know, like the, the universe, you know, they say once you write it down, the universe will show up. You know, worry about the what, write down the what and the why, mm -hmm. but don't worry about the how, the universe will provide. But what you've just done by writing stuff down, and by the way, guys, if you don't know this already, you've got a 67% more likelihood of things actually showing up if you write stuff down. So it's all well and good saying, yeah, I've got a bucket list here, but it's up in your head with your to-do list and guess which one gets done first on a day-to-day -day basis. It's your daily to-do list until something traumatic or dramatic happens to you or a loved one. So that's what we want to create some space to write this stuff down use the book to do that. But then being intentional, but when you do, writing it down. Right. When you do like, oh, so I have a really funny story about that. Like since I've written mm. this down and this has been very recent, there's been a person on this list and he actually just wrote a book. And so he was on social media talking about the, the pre-release or pre-order of his book. So I was super jazzed about that. And I sent him a, a DM on Instagram. I was just like, I pre-ordered your book. I would love to, you know, just to meet you. I, I mean, he's not going to talk to me. Right. But then all of a sudden he responded and was like, sure, I'd love to do an interview because I'm, I'm an author, you're an author, whatever else. And so um, yeah. hasn't followed up yet, but that stalking is still happening for my, so Rob Mendez, uh, if you're out there, I am literally <laughs> <doing> the show. <laughs> Just yeah, manifesting yeah, that go. right now. <laughs> love it, love it. Yeah, but it, it's funny how the world presents itself and you start, once you've written this stuff down, you've, well, let, let's, let's look at it more scientifically. You've got this thing called the reticular activating system. Right, it's it's like, and it, what it does is distort, generalize, and and makes the information more specific to you. So there's there's a heap of information coming to us at every second of the day. Your reticular activating system is like your internal Google machine, all right? Internal Google search. So what what we haven't done, what a lot of people haven't done, is typed into Google, written down 
what your bucket list things are, the, the items that you want to check off. So by writing this stuff down um, in, in and unearthing it, you're basically typing in to your reticular activating system the things that you want to show up in your search engine uh, of life. And what happens is you start noticing different conversations, different things online. You're subscribing to it. You, you, you're noticing different things. And, and before you know it, it creates a real snowball effect. And it's like, how did this, how the hell did this person turn up? Or why am I, what am I, yeah, trust in that. We need to trust in that, that the universe will provide. Yeah. Or whatever you believe in, <laughs> the universe will provide to show you the way that, you know, worry about the what and the why, not about the how. The how will emerge in due course. And it's crazy how how quickly it can show up if you're really intentional. I'm telling you what, it was within a couple of weeks that that's what was started happening and little things and like the firefly, you know, I just talked about that story and you know how many millions of fireflies I've seen? I could probably see them every night, but because yeah. that was in my head and I knew that that's something I wrote down and I had an opportunity to do it right then, I went after it. But had I not oh. wrote that down, I probably would have just ignored it like I have every other time. But because it, it was that intention. So that really, mm. I really mm. just, like you said, it, it is having an impact. And I do notice now that I have written that, it down, what is, um, my eyes are open to what's coming my way because of just putting it out into the universe. Yeah, I, I guess to, to make a, a real, put a full stop on that is, you know, let's say you buy you buy a particular car and it's red, you know, and before seeing this car, you haven't seen any of these sort of cars on the road, you buy this red car and uh, then you see these red cars everywhere mm -hmm. after you've bought yours. That's exactly what we're talking about here. That's a reticular activating system at work. It is so, so wonderful. So you do, I know you said something in here as well as, you know, we've had a conversation about um, the business bucket list. So that's coming soon, um, maybe, or coming mm. in the next couple of years of your business bucket list. So what what are some suggestions about those, about, you know, if you're in business, because obviously we're both in business and serving people yeah. with materials. Um, what is the purpose or the general um, overall arcing purpose of, um, separating that from your regular bucket list. Well, I, I think I think what this what this helps people do, and right now a lot of people, and I've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs in the last twelve to eighteen months, um, and I, I think you know during COVID and lockdowns and all this sort of stuff that's going on, we've we've really you know we've really had the opportunity to take a big collective global deep breath in and recalibrate on what work and life actually looks like right and i think we've we've been given the opportunity to redefine that for themselves for ourselves i don't call it work life balance i call it work life blend and you know this better than anyone with your community balance is a myth the balance is a myth oh, there's no I'm, such thing you know it's I, either I'm obsessed, I'm a, yeah, I'm obsessed about being a great parent. I'm, I'm obsessed about my health. I'm, I'm obsessed about my business. It's okay to be obsessed. It's just a time management issue. Right. But nothing ever balances. I'm, right. You know, like if you're if you're obsessed about you you growing your business and you're in a startup, something's going to suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, but but it's okay to be obsessed about everything. Um, so nothing ever balances. I call it work-life blend because that's the work that, you know, that's the world that we live in right now, right? And so, you know, redefining that for, for ourselves in this new normal, so many people have started new businesses in the last 12 months. It's like crazy. There's probably some, I've heard some like, amazing stats around people starting their new business. So some people have chopped and changed. They've, they've added new streams of income to their business. But I think still, when we're in this redefinition phase, recalibration phase right now, um, it's important to bring in the, the bucket list and, and how that relates to your setting up of this vehicle or the redefining of this vehicle. Because um, it's kind of like we all run an online business now with the, the uh, and as a bonus, some have got an offline component, <laughs> you know? It's it's now or never, fail forward faster, redefine, but whatever you do, set it up with you in mind as number one, your bucket list for you and your family in mind as number one. Let's not forget about why you're setting it up 
and having that big why, you know, that big life plan, the form of a bucket list, which is going to constantly evolve. You're going to constantly add things to it. You're going to constantly cross things off to it. Let's just find a vehicle. Let's define and recalibrate and do a stock take on the vehicle that you've got or that you want to start um, or the one you want to get rid of and start. Um, make sure it spits out the time flow and the cash flow uh, to, to, to allow you uh, to do what you want to do in life. You first find a vehicle that, that, that serves that purpose, that, that provides you with those resources. Double bonus, though, in the work-life blend side of things, double bonus if you actually love what you do and hit your values and you're of service to the community and the people around you, you're doing good out there in the world. I think that's the holy grail. You love what you do. It's giving you the time and the money. So that's what I call a bucket list business, you know, uh, 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 where you're on your own passion um, and I think it, it's giving you what you need for you and your family. What, do you, what are your thoughts on the, there's, I mean, a lot of people, maybe myself included for a time, I mean, I'm starting to get over it, but um, with the bu bucket list being so um, self-focused of the people that struggle with, oh, that feels so selfish. So I can't pursue all of the things I want to do because what about everybody else, especially moms? Um, not that dads don't go through that too, but like we all are, we have other people to take oh. care of or, or mm. other things. How do you continually put oh, yourself don't even get me started first? on this one? Oh, don't even get me started. The number one regret of the dying by Bronnie Ware. Here's a book. Look. The top five regrets of the dying. Here we go. All right, amazing palliative care nurse Bronnie Ware, Aussie, uh, who who hung out at nursing homes. She was a palliative care nurse um, and interviewed a heap of people who were on their deathbed, basically, um, for her original blog that became a best-selling book. The top five regrets of the dying. She summarised that their top regrets after after interviewing them. number one regret of the dying is I wish I lived a life true to myself, not what others expected of me. Another one is I, I wish I, I wish I let myself be happier. You know, it, it's pretty crazy. Now, my I'll answer a question with a question. Do your kids want you to be happy yes, as a mom? They do, do because that right. means I'm better to them. <laughs> right. So if you're living a life of absolute sacrifice, you're always in charity to other people, are you living a happy life? Look, maybe you are, but the stats don't lie. You know, there's a lot of people that sacrifice for other people only to try and get back that time later on in life. And I think what your kids really want is you to be happy, is you to look after yourself. I know I do that for my, you know, my parents. I want them to live their life as much as they possibly can and, shall I say, be the example for me as their son to follow. So my question is, does your, sacrif does your sacrifice, all right, uh, lead to you being the best example of fun, adventure, fulfilment, a purposeful life, or does it not? And for a lot of people, they're not being the example that their kids actually want them to be. Right. right. That's so, that's so, so, so self true. Leadership. This is about self leadership. It's about and and you know it's funny when a when a divorce happens and it happens you know when there's a separation suddenly the mum the, the the you know the newly the newly you know um, the new single mum the new single dad um, goes and does everything for them you know because they couldn't previously. You know, what we need to do is have a couple of bucket lists, all right? So check this out. Have one for yourself. It's all about you and it's okay to to live your own life. I mean, that's what it's all about. But also have a couple's bucket list. Read the book as a couple. Create a couple's bucket list. And better yet, do it as a family. Create a family bucket list. And everyone having their own individual bucket list, oh, I believe. And, and sure, the two will, the, you know, they'll all mesh together. Um, but that's been my advice. Have a family bucket list. Have it all. Every individual have a bucket list if they're old enough, of course, and mm -hmm. also have a couple's, a couple's bucket list. That, that, 
it's so some, funny. Some of these bucket lists get super weird too. I'll, they I'll, do, I'll, but I tell you what, my dog. So <laughs> another another check off, tick off your list, right? Uh, click it. What is it? Tick it before you kick it, right? Um. So this this yeah. summer, we I have of course been obsessed with this since I got it, and so I've been talking to everybody about you know my bucket list and this and that, and so um, my daughter who just turned eighteen, um, we just got back from <laughs> vacation for for. Uh, the last 10, 10 days or so. And one of the things on her bucket list was she wanted to hug or pet a bear. She loves animals. Ooh. And she's like, where can I find a bear to like pet or hug? She's like, I want to hug a bear. And so as mm -hmm. we were doing something, my sister was like, hey, I found this place called Oswald's Bear Ranch. And it's up in the upper peninsula of uh, Michigan. And it was on our route to where we were going to see, you know, hiking and mountain climbing and things like that. So we stopped at Oswald's Bear Ranch and she got to take a picture and pet a, a bear cub. And she was just she couldn't wait to check that off her list. And we even got oh, a little yeah. sticker from Oswald's Bear Ranch. Oh, there we it. go. So there we this go. is a trickle down effect when we when oh, I start amazing. talking a lot and my kids start getting excited about things they want to do with yeah. their life. I'm like, well, why not now? Why not for the rest yeah. of you? You guys are young. I started, you know, later, but you know, you have your whole life to do these things. And so when people ask me too about work, like I you know I do work a lot and I love my job yeah. and I love inspiring mm -hmm. and helping people become successful. But the reason I work is so that I can do the 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 things that I want to do that are the most fulfilling for me as well, helping people, but then also enjoying the fruits of my labor and and being able to see yeah. the world and see my kids check things off their list and just do the the fun things in life. And so that's what a rewarding career offers is yeah. that you also yeah. get the benefits I mean, of of that. Yeah, it's as a parent, right? It, it's not what you say; it's how you live. It's the example that you show that has the biggest effect. Um, and because you're full of life, glass half full. Always go to tailored adventure. Happier. You're not bitching and complaining about about everything, and you and 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 you're setting up a life to to serve what you want. That has a uh, that'll have a crazy ripple effect. You know, a crazily positive ripple effect. Um, but see, here's the thing too, Kristen. This isn't just about checking stuff off. Like check this out. This isn't just about going, hey, you know, boom, tick it before yeah. you kick it. Right. right. This is. <laughs> This is um, really about how a person, how we reverse engineer every aspect of our lives in order to make this stuff come to fruition. It's the growth of us on this journey towards these self-imposed destinations. But most importantly, it's about the person that exists on the other side. And that's the person that we don't know yet. That is our potential. That's yes. what I want everyone to get curiously excited about because life is way too short not to. Uh, my one of my favorite things that you said here in the book, I'm trying to find the quote, it was right there on that page, same page that you just said too. is like, it's not really necessarily about that thing. It's about who you become in the process, because you do have to challenge yourself. I mean, there's some challenging things on my list that, you know, I'm I'm trying to figure out when I'm planning to do those things. And there's the small little things, but, you know, some of them are going to be very physically challenging and I have to prepare mm. myself for that. So that involves self-discipline yeah. and it involves um, planning and different things that, that challenge me to just become the person I want to be in the process. So it's not just about, yeah. okay, I checked off a list. I mean, anybody can go to Oswald's Bear Ranch, but it's the yeah. legacy of of the adventure and leaving it for other people and then who you become in the process. And that was really and one of my a, favorite and, quotes. And, and there's a couple of things there to note. There's, it creates a snowball effect of happiness as well. So what I mean by that, or what I call a bucket list snowball effect, and 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 in book number two, there'll be there's so many examples of this. Like, I, what I recommend is is that people, you know, when they when they get the book and they map out what their bucket list is, that you cross off the smallest, the most doable things that you possibly can, like right right away. That don't require any time, any money, just intention, and let go do it. Um, because once once you start crossing off some of these smaller things, it creates this momentum and motivation to smash through the bigger ones. I'm doing, and by the way, I'm doing five things on my bucket list right now. What right? are they? So, so um, well, I'm doing an ultimate challenge and I'm reading 52 books in a year. So literally this morning, and this is this is a habit that I cannot shake now. Like I get up every morning and I read, uh, read at four, start at 4.30, get a, get a coffee um, and read a couple of pages. You know, I, I read out loud 
because my retention of information by reading an actual book, reading an actual book with pages, with a pen, uh, yes. that's that, boy, um, that versus even listening to a book is so much better. And in the morning it's so much better and my retention, you know, um, just increases tenfold compared to other times of the day or other, you know, learning through other mediums. Um, I read out loud. My partner Tracy, she's uh, she's an artist. She sketches while I draw. We, we've gone through literally. This is this is what I've read so far on that journey. Um, that that segment there, and we've got oh, one, two, three, four. I ordered six books on Amazon the other day. So it's just like I'm backing them up, and I it, I just can't stop now. Nice. And how that has actually changed my life. The ripple effect of just that one has been amazing. Um, the other thing that I'm doing at the moment is, well, I'm building out, you know, certified bucket list coaches. We've got certified bucket list coaches now teaching this stuff. We launched that in January 2018. We've got certified bucket list coaches uh, out there in 22 countries at the moment. So we're on a, we're on a mission to, this is legacy under that category. Mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, looking for a 1,000 coaches to have tribes of 10,000 10, people each because um, we're on route. Our mission for that is 10 million bucket listers to tick it before they kick it. Um, I also uh, i am looking at when I can do the cage of death experience. <laughs> uh, the cage of death experience is where you get in a cylindrical perspex tube and they drop you in the water with uh, surrounded by crocodiles. Oh, yeah, no, that would not be on my list. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know why I want to do it. I'm I don't, terrified I just don't know. of crocodiles. My, my, uh, my dad watched a movie when I was a, a young girl um, no, no. that I caught some of it, and someone was literally eating a kid alive with a crocodile, and I've been terrified ever since. So, oh, yeah, no, Jesus I could watch Christ. you That's, do that, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, no. Bad That's example, so but um, uh, swim with the whale sharks, and again, this is all domestic stuff because we mm -hmm. can't travel really at the moment. So this is all domestic stuff. Um, swim with the whale sharks, Ningaloo Reef in South in Western Australia, and the other thing when I um, uh, when I t -t 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 published the book, I bought myself a gift, and that gift was a four channel DJ mixer. So I'm, you know, oh, yes. So I can't play a musical instrument to save myself. Um, I just remembered another one I'm doing. Uh, so I've been learning to DJ in my spirit, and I find a lot of flow in that and mm -hmm. all sorts of different music um, and uh, absolutely love it. And I, I, you know, the whole day can go past uh, and here I am, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to be Run DMC. Yeah, uh, I love and, it. Uh, but, the other thing, thanks to Duolingo, I'm on my 45th day today of learning Spanish. Wonderful. Yeah, one of the things I'm working on is I, I bought myself a guitar. I've always wanted to play guitar. And someone had told me when I was younger that I should, should sing instead of play an instrument because I played an instrument once and it was terrible. Um, but I've <laughs> always wanted to, to play guitar. And it was literally right after I read this that I was like, I'm buying one and I'm going to start lessons. Cool. And so here it sits over here, ready to you know, ready to go. Um, and so, yeah, just this little things like that, because why not? Why not us? Why not now? Why, why wait? I mean, what are you waiting for? You got to have, you know, before anyone writes and, and really uh, book number two, will be a lot about this is, is helping people get clear on their why it's all well and good to establish the what, but the why, the why will make you cry. The, the reason why is the thing that really gets gets us out of the bed in the morning, you know, and and that's the reason. And then every, every person wants to do something on their, for every item on a person's bucket list, there's a, there's a really a, normally quite an emotional why, you know, and if the why out of 10 is like a, you know, one to five or one to six, it's probably, you know, you, you can't be fussed really doing it. You won't go out of your way. But if it's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then you will do what you have to do in order to make that happen, you know. And, you'll, you know, when the why is strong enough, the how will work itself out. I you know, 100% you, you move agree. heaven and hell to make it happen, right? And it, it, it's, that's very true. You know, no one has to, 
you know, like they say, you know, hungry people are the ones that work, right? Because when your appetite, need, you know, you need to feed yourself, you're going to get mm -hmm. up and go to work because you have no other, you know, that's your motivation. And it's the same yeah. kind of thing. It depends on how hungry you are for that. Why? What is the reason that you want to do that? And you know what? Just to give everybody out there permission, because I know sometimes, especially women, especially women who are taking care of, you know, moms and things like that is for, for me and some others is, is that we think we we're waiting for permission for someone to tell you it's okay for you to do things just for you, that you don't have to serve everyone all the time. And it can just be because you want to, there doesn't have to be any other reason or some sort of philosophical or religious or deep reason why you want to do something. It can simply be because you want to, because it delights you to do so. And you, this is That's your it. permission granted. You have permission to do whatever it is that you want to do, but do it with intent and don't, keep putting it off that's really what i want yeah. to tell people um, adding to that one of the, one of the one of the one of the things that i hear most frequently from people and so do our coaches now people say and this is this is scary to even even talk about like like so many times people say to us uh, you know thank you for giving me permission to dream again <laughs> so dude what happened yeah they thought they couldn't. They, they, we stop. We stop pushing the envelope. We stop. We we stop for some reason. We become a sheep. Yeah, and that's part of my dream big step small. Is that people was you know with my book is people were asking, well, how did you have this success and how did you have these big dreams and and actually make them happen? Going from home foreclosure and financial ruin to um, very successful businesses. People want to know your story, and it really was just having that big dream and taking the small intentional steps. Nothing, like you said, nothing that moves mountains every single day, but the mm. accumulative steps over time is where you get, is how you get where you want to go. It's not some big breakthrough moment that all of a sudden happens. It's just the cumulative efforts over time of never giving up on what you want. And mm. sometimes that requires sacrifice. And sometimes that requires what some people will call selfishness. Um, but really it's not selfish to take care of yourself and the better you are, the better you can serve others. And so that's part yeah. of me being just my best version of myself is, you know, I'm happier. I'm excited yeah. about other things besides work and besides these things because I have intention. And that's really what this really yeah. helps. Yeah, remove the word selfish. Remove right. the word selfish, everyone. Remove the word selfish. Um, it's not relevant here. This is, a, this is you practicing self-leadership. Yes, self leadership. To be the example, to be the example, but to be the example for other people to follow, but not not showing you, ha ha, look at me, not from an ego point of view, just being the example that you wish for others. And that's so true, especially as parents, because how else are our children going to learn how to chase their own dreams if we don't show them how it looks, what it looks like? Like, I'm willing to give up days, evenings, weekends to practice something that I really want to accomplish. And this is how you push through. This is how you do it. This is how you mm -hmm. prepare for something big, an ultimate challenge or, you know, playing the guitar till my fingers bleed because it hurts so bad. But just like <laughs> the idea of like, this is what it looks like to accomplish things and really set out to there's so many life skills you learn with that so all the moms out there or dads or parents or people caring for other people um you're what you're doing is teaching other people how to live your own life and live your legacy and live your dreams and they will follow suit because they see uh, the results of it from you that's it awesome. beautiful Thank you so much for being here. Everybody, my bucket list blueprint. If you have this, share it with us. Put it in the comments. Send emails to Trav and his team about your bucket yeah. list. I know at the end, he invites you to send your bucket list. I did that um, just because it keeps you accountable. Um, so do it. I'm telling you, it will change your life. You won't regret, regret having this. And you'll just have more fun. You'll have more fun in life. You'll have more fulfillment because you're intentional about um, being the best version of yourself. So again, thank you so much for being here. Thebucketlistguy.com. That's where you find the book or Amazon or wherever. And um, mm -hmm. you guys, we can't wait to hear your feedback on what you're putting on your bucket list. So same time, same place next week, you guys on the Amazon files. Thank you so much.